In this video, we are going to detect the infrared signal when we press it using this receiver on ESP32 module and ESP32 extension board from SunFounder. This button, it's, it shows that backwards have been pressed and if I press mute, equalizer to pause any of these, it responds very well and we can detect the uh, key press. And we are going to take action. If a particular key is pressed, the buzzer should sound. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network and also it comes with micro SD card where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. Come to this page docs.sunfounder.com scroll down until you see ESP32 then click on ESP32 Starter Kit Main. On the left side, click on Arduino User. And then scroll down to 5.14 IR Receiver. This is the documentation for today's lesson. And here we have some explanation about t uh, the transmitter and receiver of infrared. And we need ESP32 uh, board, ESP32 camera extension board from SunFounder, breadboard, jumper wires, and infrared receiver with the remote. We are going to use these pins, one of these pins, and the infrared receiver has these three pins, which I'm going to show you how to use it, but we are going to connect it to pin 14. Here is the wiring, which I'm going to show you practically. And we are going to install the, uh, this library. I'm going to explain the code when we reach to the code section. And here we have some explanation for the code as well. If I come to this point and click on infrared receiver, this is the infrared receiver. It has a bump at the top. This side is flat and the other side has a bump and this is plus minus and the last pin is signal so we have plus minus and signal the plus can be connected from 3.3 to 5 volts and then this is our remote controller with certain keys and this will send a signal with 38 kilohertz this is our remote uh, there is inside this there is a battery and when we remove this, the connection is established. And this is our receiver, as simple as that. When you use ESP32 with SunFounder's ESP32 camera extension module like this, it comes also with a battery on the package and it comes a built-in charger so you can connect it and charge it and disconnect and later on you can use it with a lot of power so you can power up your application very easily. Now let's do the wiring. We are holding this such that the bump is on our side and this side is flat. So insert it somewhere 
on the breadboard like this. I'm connecting it here. The red wire, which later I'm going to connect it. The middle pin is negative or ground. I'm connecting a black wire. These are all the same, so I'm connecting it. And then, and then connect a blue wire to the left pin, which is connected to pin 14. Here, pin 14 is labeled in here. That's pin 14 or connected to this pin 14. You can also connect it. If you're a female connector, you can connect it directly on this board without this extension board. But with this extension board, we have a battery and a battery charger built in, and wires can be connected and secured. I prefer this connector better than connecting it without that. So let's connect pin 14 here and tighten it. The red and black are connected to the last pin. This is ground, a second pin, and the first one is 3.3 volts. The wiring is now completed. I'm opening Arduino IDE. Let's open our project by clicking on File, Open. On the left side, click on Downloads. Then ESP32 Starter Kit Main on the right side. Double click to open it. Double click on C. Double click on Codes. And scroll to 5.14 IR Receiver. Double click to open this folder. Select the 5.14 IR receiver and click open to open it. This line is a IR remote ESP8266. We need to install it, select it and copy and then click on this icon. Right click here and paste it and you will see and you will see this David Conran this is the library. Click install and it will be installed in a few seconds. Click on this icon to exit. So these two are all together and then we are creating a pen, IR receiver pen, pen 14, unsigned integers of type constant and then from this IR receiver we are creating an instance of a class of it we call it IR receive and we pass this pen to it so this is initializing the receiver and then we create an object for decode result here inside the setup we initialize the serial monitor with 115,200 and then from this IR receive we initialize it by IR receive dot enable IRN so this is starting the library for the receive Inside the loop, which starts from here to here, we have this FIR receive decode. So we call the decoder and here at and result we are passing this object, this here. So this goes to the function and the result will come either true or false. And here, here it says if it is true, then we get we use that decode. Uh, key value result dot value from this receiver we get the result result dot value from this object results dot value we pass it to this function this function is at the bottom here and it has been defined with hexadecimal value and if the value is this value it means return zero so the zero key have been play, uh, pressed if the value is this value it's one two and three four five six and then equal cycle backward forward so for each key we have specific value and if there is nothing it will return error so this will return the value and the result of this will be stored in a variable called key of type string and here we check if key is not equal error we saw it at the bottom if there is nothing it will be error so we check if it's not equal error then we print that that value on the screen telling us what key have been pressed and then after that it says i receive resume so this will continue receiving 
and the loop will end here and it will come back and repeat all these tasks over again. Now let's see how we can select the ESP32 board. We can click here under the select board and type here ESP32 DEV. As soon as you type dev, you will see dev board. You can select it and click OK. So the board have been selected. Now we have to select the port. The, the other way to select the board is click on tools, board, ESP32 and select the ESP32 dev module. Now we have to select the port. If I click here, it shows two ports and I don't know which one belongs to my device. Sometimes you will, see, you will not see the number properly. So the best way to be sure, the right click on the start menu, go to the device manager and you will see here the ports. If I click on this arrow, it will show me the ports. One is USB serial CH340, one, the other is USB serial device. And here, now it's connected. If I disconnect this, one of them disappear. The one that disappeared is my board. So six stays and it disappeared. If I connect it, so it is my COM port, CH340. Now it is my COM port and I can select it. Or I can click on tool, port, and here you will see it. You can select whichever you want. Ours is COM8. Now we have successfully selected the board and the port. And this is very important. It must be done first. Now let's click to upload the, the code. So upload is now completed. Uh, let's pay attention here. We have defined the serial monitor with 115,200 and this number must match. For example, if you have 9,600, you will see some strange unreadable characters like this. So make sure to select 115,200. And now here, my remote is ready. And let me press a key, minus, and as you can see, it shows minus here. Let me increase the text size. Press 2. I'm, I'm pressing now 2. And as you can see, it shows 2, 1, plus, and then power, forward, reverse, backwards, mode, mute, all the keys. So it's working perfectly. And here, if you want to know the amount of current from ESP32, this is a data sheet for ESP32. So when you set the current for 3.3 volts, when you set it to high, the maximum, the typical is 40 milliampere. So that's huge amount of current. This is when it is high. If you want to set it to low, then it will be maximum uh, at 28 milliampere. Now I'm going to show you the amount of current that this buzzer needs. I've connected it to 3.3 volts. First, let me show you the voltage. This is negative and that's a positive. So let's see the voltage first. First, 3.28 volts. So that's 3.3 volts. I'm connecting the negative to the negative and then this positive to the buzzer. And let's read the volt, the current. So it's around 15 milliampere. And it is safe to use it with ESP32 to turn it on from the pens. If we have only one of this, it will be okay. There is no harm for ESP32 to turn the buzzer on because we measured it and it is around 16 milliampere. Now we are going to add this active buzzer, which we learned about this in previous lessons. I'm going to add it. So uh, a particular key, we will program it if it is pressed. This should buzz. Otherwise, the other key should not trigger it. First, 
let's insert it the long pin is to the right let's just insert it here connect a red, a red wire to the right connect a black wire to the left and because we know this we have a ground so the black wire from the left let's connect it to the middle pin and then the red pin let's connect it to pin here pin 13 and here I connected it to pin 13 and now let me explain the code I have defined pin 13 as alarm pin of type integer and constant so this variable is used now inside the setup I used a pen mode and set alarm pen to output so this is for buzzer we are using and then inside the loop I use this F condition up to here we, we, we check if key is equal equal this two equals mean compare if it is EQ inside double quotation then we and the EQ is pressed that is this key if this key is pressed then we say we use digital right and set alarm pin to high and our buzzer will turn on else else means if this is not equal e2 anything else then we use digital right and set alarm pin to low and the buzzer will be turned off all the time unless the eq is pressed continuously now how how, how did i get this eq you can come here and get 0 1 2 3 up to 9 and then plus and here i took eq but make sure to get the whole thing and, and put it inside double quotation as I've shown here because it's a string. And now our project is powered with lithium battery that comes with this ESP32 extension kit from SunFounder. Everything is ready and if I press this... As you can see, it works perfectly. And when I release it, it will. So every time I press it, it just reads it and thus the loop will continue reading it. So if I hold it, it will not work. So I have to release it. And these keys are for one time. And if I press any other key, it will not work.